This video contains the proof to two properties of a stochastic discount factor. Now, since this video belongs to a sequence, I will not reintroduce notation that was already introduced in previous videos of that same sequence. Now, anyhow, first, I want to prove the following relationship. And then we prove that relationship here on the expected risk premium. So let's start with the first proof. If M is a stochastic discount factor, then M times capital R needs to be a local martingale. Now that says that the conditional instantaneous expected change of M times R needs to be zero. We therefore have a restriction, an economic restriction, that we will now work on mathematically. So as a result, we will then get what we wanted to prove. So let's do the math. We want to set the conditional expectation of dm times r to zero. So we would now apply Etor lemma to the product m times r to get their dynamic evolution. So the change of m times r equals m dr plus r dm. Let's divide both sides by mt and rt and let's take expectations. Now, since the expectation needs to be zero, we also set the expectation to zero. And hence, we end up with the following equation here. Now, as dr over r equals just the instantaneous short rate dt, we have found what we wanted to show, namely rt dt equals minus the conditional expectation of dm over m. Now, so what did we learn from that proof? First, you got some practice in Eto calculus. Second, you see firsthand how assumptions about the SDF feed into these important properties. And third, from an economic point of view, you see that the expected instantaneous reduction of the investor's stochastic discount factor coincides with the instantaneous time value of money. Hence, you see firsthand that for an impatient investor, wasting time means losing money. Next, we turn to prove the second relationship. We want to prove that the conditional expected risk premium of an asset I equals lambda transpose times the instantaneous covariation between the systematic shocks of the economy, dB, and return innovations of asset I. So, said differently, we want to prove that an asset pays only an risk premium in expectation if its return innovations co-move with non-diversifiable factor risk. So remember the third condition for M being a stochastic discount factor. That condition was that M times S together with M times R is a local martingale. Hence, we now have two economic restrictions. And now we apply some math onto that to derive that very famous risk premium result. Now, it suffices if we pick just one risky asset I out of our set I element 1 to n. So we need to show or we need to work with the restriction that the conditional expectation of dsi times m is zero. So we apply it to lemma to the product of m and si and we get the following. Uh, the change of m times si equals that expression here. 
Now we divide both sides by m times si. Now we therefore end up with the next relationship here. Now let's take the conditional expectation of the left and of the right hand side of that last equation. So the conditional expectation of the left hand side must be zero because of the martingale property. The conditional expectation of the first term on the right hand side equals minus rdt. We showed that just above, which is the implication of m times r being a martingale. Now hence, we arrive at the following equation here, which is already very close to what we wanted to show. It says that the conditional expected risk premium of asset i coincides in equilibrium with the negative instantaneous covariation of the asset's return with the stochastic discount factor of the economy. So in a world with Brownian motion risk only, the innovation part of the SDF equals dm over m minus the conditional expectation of dm over m is simply minus lambda t transpose d bt. Again note, lambda is the column vector of ex ante expected market prices of risk and db are the systematic shocks in the economy. So as we plug that relationship to the previous expected risk premium expression, we get that really useful relationship that we wanted to prove. Namely, the conditional expected risk premium for any asset I coincides with the product of expected factor risk premiums times the instantaneous covariation of asset I's return with the economy's systematic sources of risk. Now, that result connects very well to basic concepts such as the capital asset pricing model. Because the result says that the ex ante expected risk premium for asset I coincides with the product of the expected market price of non-diversifiable risk times the ex ante expected amount of non-diversifiable risk that's present in asset I's return. So notice here also that you can easily imagine that each I stands for another asset class. Hence that restriction also tells us that an asset market is arbitrage free if all asset classes are priced with the same SDFM. And the result is then that each ex ante expected asset risk premium coincides with the product of market price of risk times the amount of systematic risk.